it's absolutely vital to be able to communicate with management. Uh, and part of the reason, uh, it seems, is that management only speak a different language. Um, and there's a bit of translation that needs to go on. Uh, technical terms, for example, uh, if I mention the kernel, you know, he might think it's related to KFC or, you know, some form of chicken or maybe, maybe a, the, the kernel root beer, uh, something like that. And there can be a, a mismatch of definitions. One of the biggest challenges about speaking upstream is it's not a once a year activity. It's not like you go to the board once a year, here's my budgets, and you wrap it up. You, you hire an external agency to make it in the beautiful font and graphic design and here are my budgets and this is justification because they don't know you. What have you done for the other 11 and a half months in between to build up that relationship with, with senior management? So it's not a sprint, it, it's something that's very long term. Whenever we see a movie or something, we don't necessarily remember the dialogues, but those scenes remain with us. So the picture has an impact which creates a, a kind of an impact on our memory. So I think visualization of data is very important to show what you are doing in terms of articulating that in terms of data and showing the dashboard to the business is really, really important because that makes it presentable, that makes it understandable. Otherwise, we may be doing something in our dungeon for last one year and without telling anyone, nobody would understand why what we are doing, why we are doing it, what value it has brought to the company. And next year when you go and ask for the budget, people will be thinking, what is it for? We haven't seen it, we don't know about it. If you're the guy who's only only interactions in the last 12 months have been the data centers down, the servers blown up, your applications offline. When they see your face across the boardroom table, they're not going to be happy. They're, what's going through their mind is like, yeah, get out. Security people should go and find the best marketing people in their business and actually find out what has made them the best marketing people in the business. Find out how they do things and how they sell things because ultimately that's what we're trying to do. You know, we're trying to sell something which I suppose our selling point is it might reduce your chances of being hacked and you need to give me lots of money uh, for, for us to do that. It's, it's a tough sell. I'm a firm believer that it doesn't matter how good you are at penetration testing, if you're not good at writing a report and you can't write something that a manager is going to understand, then you may as well not have done the test at all because the report is the most important part of a penetration test. You could be the best penetration tester in the world, but if you can't write something that a manager or a non-technical person can look at and say, I understand this is a risk and we should deal with it, then we've already failed as an industry. If you can understand where the management is coming from, then I think you, you've won half your battle because then you can reply about the things that they care about. I always remember when I, worked, I used to work in banks and the thing that I think brought it home to me was we've been talking to them about data being proliferating on shares, so data being left lying around that it shouldn't be. And it wasn't until we said, and here's the director's address, here's their name, here's the date of birth, because that was left in one of the files because they were a customer. And they said, oh, and instantly you could see, the, oh, this is my data, that's not good, I don't want my data lying around. And suddenly the conversation changed and it was very much, right, let's get this fixed. So making it real.